What is up everybody, it's Vin Diesel here with Sportsman's Warehouse. We're going to be tying up a crayfish fly pattern or a crawdad uh, as I fish them here locally. Uh, if there's a bunch of materials you're going to need, this is uh, we're going to start with a jig style hook. This is an S506 in a size 2. I have fished these up to a 4 aught. We're going to need some weight and this is a tungsten cone head. And uh, the next step is we're going to be needing some of these uh, silly legs in the uh, orange or crayfish color, as I call them. And uh, we're going to be using a, uh, a product that's a guinea feather. And this is uh, orange. It comes, these are pretty nice little feathers. And uh, they seem to be more premium. You can also purchase it on the skin through other suppliers. And then we're going to be using for the antennae some uh, medium orange legs. And for the claws, we're going to be using this uh, rabbit strip um, in the orange crayfish. And for the body, we're going to be using this crazy orange. And I like to mix a little bit of the regular orange in. And just to hold everything together, you're going to need some Z-Cement. And also for the, uh, the shell, uh, we're going to be using some of this uh, Loon Thin. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got the cone on the hook. Like I said, this is a size 2. Make sure it's nice and secure. You don't want that point going into your uh, finger or anything throughout this process. And we're using a, a 6 aught uni black thread. I'm going to go ahead and start my thread right here on the bend. This is a little bit difficult to tie, but uh, we'll go ahead and just snip, trip out that uh, tag end. And then here's how I modify this from the Sven's Cray Cray, a pattern I know to be super effective, is I'm going to take these two uh, silly legs, I just ripped them off the tag, I'm going to fold them in half, and I'm going to fold them in half again. What we're doing is we're just, you know, getting eight to ten segments out of two pieces rather than, you know, pulling off eight and wasting a lot of material. Now I'm just going to kind of loop those around so that I've got about a quarter of an inch off the front, and I'll go ahead and secure that right there on the the not not at the bend I want it to be on the portion going up towards the eye and then I'll go ahead and make sure that those are each jetting out to each side and I'm not doing super tight wraps here just securing wraps I don't want to cut these silly legs and then as I get down to the bend I'm going to now crank down on those wraps to basically compress the material and then I'll trim it short if you don't do that process you won't be able to slide this cone up and over and so now I'm just going to really crank down and then as I get my way up towards the eye then I'm gonna do some little a little bit looser wraps but they're still securing wraps but just a little bit looser and then um, I want to just go ahead and test this to make sure it slides up and over and of course you may have to fiddle with it a little bit and yes of course it does and so then I'm going to advance my thread down and just provide a little bit of a thread base down midway down the shank of the hook because we're going to go ahead and do a whip finish now and like I said this is a modification off the Sven's Cray Cray um, trying to just use this tungsten cone which might be of benefit through dragging it through the rocks give it a little bit more guidance instead of uh, lead barbell eyes and then I'll just trim these uh, silly legs so uh, they're roughly the um, you know a quarter of an inch three sixteenths of an inch uh, you can play around with this you can always cut them shorter on the water using your forceps or um, you know nippers but uh, you can never add to it and so now that we've got that thread base right there we're gonna go ahead and start our thread again and I'm gonna work it down into the bend of the hook um, because we're going to do a little technique I, I, I call the hackle cone and for this we'll be using those guinea feathers and so I'm going to do you know a little bit past the bend there you can see because we're going to this first hackle cone we're just going to prep this guinea fowl feather by preening off all the fluff and I'm going to take it and get the tip this is a little bit more difficult than a traditional hackle feather uh, but it's still doable and will give you good practice for um, doing it with, uh, you know, uh, you could use schloppen or a few other materials for this, but these guinea fibers are really stiff and durable, and when you do it this way, they're kind of barred, um, almost a little bit better than like a grizzly. And so this is kind of an awesome feather for this. The only disadvantage is you can see how quick that gets to a thick stem. So we want to basically get that, tied off as close to those uh, that ending wrap as possible because we don't want to build up we're going to be tying in a bunch of material so we don't want to add a ton of bulk and here's where I call it the hackle cone I'm going to wrap back over those fibers and you can see how it kind of makes a little cone right there um, I think that this uh, we're going to be doing uh, uh, two more of these um, through this process to kind of push the uh, claws away from the body 
Uh, next, we're going to take this medium round orange. I'm just going to tie it in on the top of the shank, and they're kind of together at this point as I work towards the end of that hackle cone. Now I'm doing kind of those loose snug wraps. I'm not doing super tight, and then I'll use that to my advantage now kind of, of splaying them apart, and that way they're, they're not going to be touching um, naturally. They're going to want to be a little bit apart from each other on the rest, and that's typically where I have the most... Um, hits is when this is is on the pause not so much on the strip however um, you know you can get them either way now um, this is the mono eyes uh, I, there's other videos on how to do this I'll put a little link here potentially um, I'm not gonna waste uh, the time in this but basically you're, you're taking some 30 pound mono and uh, making these uh, these eyes and for the, the purpose of this you can use uh, nail polish, you can use black UV resin, you can use uh, clear UV resin and then color it with a sharpie. If you do it that way I recommend doing a second coat and the uh, video if I can tag it uh, will explain all that. But um, basically we want to tie those in so that they're roughly half the distance of the hook gap. Um, you just want them sticking out just barely uh, midway through that hackle cone and just trim off the excess and there's also products you can buy where these are already made if you struggle uh, making these but uh, you're gonna burn your fingers a few times your first couple times making them like I did I still burn them but uh, next we're gonna take and make our second hackle cone um, these are to also represent some of these small antennae um, and legs uh, but not so much legs at this point but just to add that uh, bushiness right here going off the back and uh, these 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 hackle fibers when we wrap back over it creating that cone um, these being a stiffer fi fiber you don't want to use a soft hackle uh, will allow the, um, the the claws being made of rabbit to kind of fan out from each other and not want to stick together I've tried a number of ways to get that to happen and this is the way I found the most benefit using natural materials. You could, of course, make a huge dubbing ball. I've seen that done. Um, I just really like how this adds such a great dimension to the the, uh, the crayfish or crawdad, and I think the fish noticed it as well. So um, the next step is we're going to be tying in our, our claws, and this is just that uh, rabbit strip if you're going to be doing like in the 2-0-4-0 you want to make sure to get in a magnum that just has a wider strip and I'm going to basically cut this the length of the fly um, from the the bend of the hook to the hook eye and that's a pretty good gauge to keep your proportions even and then I just flip that over and if you've got a rabbit strip that's kind of struggling for the purpose of this video I'll cut them so they're a little bit more straight However, once they're wet, it's not going to matter if there's a little bit of scoopiness curving to these. Um, it is a natural product, so when they're packaged, uh, sometimes they are packaged, twisted, or bent. But we just trimmed them so they're both the same length. I'll go ahead and cut this rabbit off. You can save this as a dubbing for future uh, flies. And on the uh, crayfish I originally tied, I actually use it for the body. But we're going to be using a simpler method uh, to make this a little bit easier and quicker, just using some of uh, Cohen's carp dub for the body, as mentioned. And I'll go ahead and tie that in so that the rabbit strip is halfway down the body. And the purpose of that is to um, also create a good taper. And then I trim the tips so that they're um, basically pointy. If you're going to be doing magnum, I actually do a, a triangle, so I'll cut it the other way as well. But for these smaller strips, I just cut it at an angle. And as mentioned, I've tried gluing um, other colors to the tips of these. I've tried uh, putting foam in it, and I, it doesn't. I don't think it makes a difference. Uh, when this lands in the water, those rabbit uh, claws naturally uh, create air pockets, and they're going to uh, basically stand up in the water more so than this tungsten cone and create a defensive position um, position to crayfish as it lands. And if you don't move it, it will stay there in the defensive position, but that's when you want to twitch it. So just make sure those are aligned. Basically coming off the back at a little bit of an angle, 5 degrees upward, maybe 10 degrees. And then we'll tie in the last uh, guinea feather. Um, this one's a little bit larger. And this will be the third hackle cone. And this is uh, not actually helping to keep the rabbit uh, strips away from each other, but rather... Uh, just to create some really nice bugginess of those small antennae and uh, uh, the head of this uh, this fly. 
and I might uh, struggle here. Uh, I don't have my hackle pliers laying around, and this is a really short stem, but um, it doesn't need to be perfectly palmered around. As you can see, I am really struggling here to get this stem um, out of these uh, fibers. So um, the struggle is real. Um, you know, I've been tying, oh shoot, I don't even know how many of these in the last several months, uh, several, uh, or at least a hundred, maybe several hundred. And uh, these, uh, it never ceases to run into a problem here. But uh, once we get this stem out, we're going to uh, get this up and over. I'm going to pinch it with my left hand and then I'll secure that stem with some nice uh, wraps. And then I'll kind of preen everything back and you wouldn't even have noticed that I struggled through that. So thanks for bearing with me. Um, there we go. So I'm just going to get those fibers all going backwards, kind of make sure they're evenly dispersed around there. And then I've got some that uh, from the tip here that I'm just going to snip out just to make it a little bit of a cleaner fly. You could leave them, it doesn't matter. We're going to get a really nice buggy body here to represent the body and also some of the legs. So we're going to make a dubbing loop by putting it around my finger and then I'll make a secondary loop so that this is extra strong and durable. And then I'll just uh, kind of twist it so it goes to a pinch, advance my thread up to right behind this tungsten cone. And then I'm going to insert this uh, loon um, dubbing loop tool um, into that and then I'll place it up here in my material clip which is probably off the camera but it you can see it's leaving it open in the dubbing loops and so here's the two colors I'm going to mix and I'm just going to stack them on top of each other twist them around pull them apart this is also stacking the fibers so that they're not all bunched up um, but you can see how this gives a really really nice blend I love the um, the blue accents in this it's just a super awesome product and then I'll just kind of spread it out a little bit as I get it uh, pretty much stacked and then open my loop insert it up and in and then I'm going to make this a really bushy thick dubbing loop um, I'm probably going to regret this how full it is but um, I want to get this body in one pass and if you, you don't you can always do a couple dubbing loops if it's easier that way but I'm just leaving that material so that it's uh, even on each side and you can see it's just twisting it up is making it super super um, tight around that thread and that, that's totally okay no matter how fast or slow you go it's going to happen and then I'll just take a little brush here and kind of use my finger underneath to help uh, support this so that I don't break it and then as I brush those fibers off my finger I think it really helps to kind of pick this out in a um, non-abrasive way. This is a stainless steel brush um, that could potentially break your thread, but we that's we did a double dubbing loop, and so it's it's pretty strong. Um, the only thing that would be stronger is if you you know were using GSP or um, had a stainless steel brush made. But um, this is kind of a key here. I just want to soak this down in super glue. We've added a lot of materials here. I want that to kind of soak in and penetrate. And it also gives a nice little um, coating because I'll wrap it right now uh, for this dubbing to kind of set into and uh, really just make this one fly, you know, all these materials into one uniform body. And, and so we'll just palmer this around with uh, touching wraps. You can spread it out a little bit if you want a little bit sparser. I go denser towards the back and then up here I'm going to kind of go a little bit sparser because I want it to match up to that cone and I did almost the perfect amount here. It looks a little bit short but we'll adjust that with our cone just because I don't want the metal sitting right up against the hook eye and against those fibers as a potential way of just snipping them off. Um, so we'll go ahead and close off that and we'll do a three turn whip finish here and finish off our fly. I'll go ahead and do a secondary one and that is pretty much most of the fly. We just got to do some cleanup work here. One is brushing it out. We want to brush a lot of this uh, body material at a downward angle and so I'm just going to use this uh, this peak uh, dubbing brush tool. Really nice for um, getting in and not bugging up the uh, the hook point there because it you know we've got plenty of room and I'm just picking out I'm being pretty abrasive with this um, and aggressive and you can see how it's just you want to get as many fibers as you can out these rubber legs in here 
Um, this is why I love his dubbing. Imitates a lot of the legs. It gives it uh, structure and profile. And that color is just awesome. I wish we could get rabbit strips with a little hints of blue on it. And anything that's kind of sticking up, bothering you, and I'm just going to, uh, you can cut out and then I'll twist this tungsten cone down just a little bit. Like I said, I don't want it sitting right up against there. We could have maybe got one more wrap of uh, dubbing there, but I want this cone to sit at an angle so that it lands down with the, you know, so when this, when this fly hits the bottom, it's going to sit at an upward angle um, in a defensive position. So we'll move that uh, back up and we're going to use some of this uh, uh, UV resin, the Loon Thin. And I'm just going to lay a generous coat. We're going to need two coats here because this first one's going to really absorb down into this and uh, make our dubbing loop almost bulletproof. And it looks like I clogged the tip. Luckily, I got a second bottle here. So I'll just grab that secondary bottle and we'll go from there. I don't know if the, uh, I know that these Loon come with several different colors tips, and it seems like I always have better luck with the black ones, not. Uh, clogging up because I, I usually set them right here and I've used my UV light and I'll I use my bodkin here and just kind of spread that out a little even trying to keep this first layer as much on top as possible um, it's not going to look super shiny or like the shell at this point um, but um, I really like how that's turning out so we'll adjust that cone now about where we want it because that UV resin is now going to kind of bond that cone in place and then I'll just wipe my bodkin with my finger and I'll go ahead and cure this up. And it takes about you know 10 to 15 seconds, but we're gonna do a double cure here. And um, so we don't need to use the full 15 seconds, but um, you can see how our fibers are mostly going down on the body. I'm gonna lay down almost as thick of a um, coating as I did last time, but this time go a little bit more onto the, the, U, uh, the tungsten cone. I'll inject a little bit of resin up into that cone to kind of just keep it in place. And um, then we'll just take our bodkin again and just spread it around and work with it. Uh, be careful at which angle you're working at um, because this resin could run off to the sides. And so I'm just putting it and bonding it to the guinea all the way up to that tungsten cone. And you can see how our, it's thicker back there at the back and goes to a taper almost perfect to the tungsten cone. And that's exactly what you want. And so we've got the rubber legs going off the tip there. That's our, uh, our, our tail. And well, I guess I better turn my light on. There we go. And we'll go ahead and cure that up now and give it a nice shiny, shiny durable um, shell. And look at that, that uh, Cohen's Carp Dove just coming out the bottom. It's got lots of UV, a little bit of UV in there and that green, which I think comes from the blue pack. But this is just a super, super buggy um, variation off of uh, my Cray Cray pattern, um, switching the tungsten cone for the, the lead eyes. And then I'm not using the um, rubber uh, silly legs as the shell back just because I don't know how to put them through there without it being super complicated. So it's really saving a few steps, also the body, uh, but I don't think it's going to affect the bugginess or fishability or durability of this fly. But these are all available through uh, Sportsman's, and so you can see as this lands, that tungsten's going to have it land just like that, and those claws are going to trap some, um, some air and sit right up in the defensive position and the eyes are going to be right there ready to go. So um, tie some up, fish them, hope they pierce some lips for you.